Good uh, morning and uh, a warm welcome to Volvo Cars and to Moment 2 where we will talk about sustainability, something that is uh, really engaging a lot of people all over the world today and uh, also the climate change and the CO2 emission is uh, seen today as a real threat to our future. So, uh, but we can also see, uh, I believe, that despite then decades of uh, political uh, climate summits and uh, very bold uh, targets, CO2 levels are still uh, increasing in the air. So we believe something else is needed really to turn this tide and, and uh, get a positive development. And we believe the answer must be really action from the business community, from companies and industry that could make the difference. And, and I believe there are some fundamentals and that has to be stated from, from our side. And that first one is that economic growth, new technology and competition on the market is not necessarily something that will be bad. It should not be seen as part of the problem. I think it should be seen as part of a possible solution for a really sustainable sustainability. Second, uh, we believe also that travel or the ability to move uh, for people uh, should also not be seen as something negative. It's something uh, basically very positive. It uh, belongs to increases the quality of life and I think it's also increases understanding between people in different uh, nations. So we should be very careful in restricting the freedom to move for people. We should make it sustainable. And that's what we will do in our area for the course. It's very important to move, but it should be made in a sustainable way. So I believe we should work with sustainability. And I have a really good example, and that is how did Volvo work with safety? We made safety a part of our, our, of our brand, a part of our company. We should do exactly the same with sustainability. Uh, if you look at uh, safety in Sweden, I have the numbers in my head. If you go back to the really worst year in the history, 1,300 people died in traffic. It was a real disaster. It was around 50 years ago. And uh, then we had 2 million cars on the roads in Sweden. Today, less than 200 people, or less than 300, between 200 and 300, uh, die. Unfortunately, still in traffic. We, we work to bring it down to zero. But we have 5 million cars on the roads. So, I mean, it's an improvement with a very impressive uh, improvement. And that was made with a good blend of internationally harmonized requirements. It was made with new technology, but also with competition on the market. So if that worked for car safety, why shouldn't uh, that work also for planetary safety? That's at least what uh, we believe. So we believe we will bring sustainability into our company, not as something add-on, because it's uh, good or uh, something that uh, is expected from us. We, we bring it into the company because we think it's really good for our business. It will make our company grow faster. It will make our company stronger, exactly as safety made uh, Volvo stronger. And I think if we do that, um, we will also contribute really to a more sustainable world. And uh, with concrete actions, more than symbolic pledges, we believe we can bring sustainability to our company. Concrete actions, we will bring all electric cars to the market in part of our electrification strategy. You will soon see the first one. More will follow, one every year. We will create a new car line of plug-in hybrids where we will increase the capacity very drastically. Already next year, 10 20% of all our cars will be twin, twin engine plug-in hybrids. And we change fundamentally the structure of our company by creating a separate unit for combustion engine. We will bring together with the, the Geely powertrain unit to enable us to fully concentrate on development of new electrification uh, 
technology. That is uh, what uh, we see as concrete measures and this will add up to a very clear commitment from our side that a Volvo built in 2025 will leave a carbon footprint that is 14% lower than a car that we build today. And that is including everything, production, supply chain, usage during the life of the car, 40% down. And that we believe is very well in line with all the political ambitions uh, uh, in the Paris Agreement, for example. With that, um, thank you for coming and uh, let's have a look at our first electric car, the new XC40. Håkan said it already. Movement has helped people and built the global society we live in today. Now stopping movement is not the answer to solve the climate issue. We want to offer people the freedom to move in a sustainable way. And also be frank about the climate issue cannot and will not be solved slowly and gradually by improving petrol and diesel engines. Pure electric cars running on and built using renewable energy are the only cars that can really do it. And also be honest about the fact that electric cars are better for the environment when they are driven. But building an electric car consumes more energy than a car with an internal combustion engine. So it all comes back, both running cars and building cars comes back to the supply for renewable power. Wind, water and sun. Now this is an, this is an issue the car industry alone cannot solve. We need cities, we need states, we need countries. We need help to build an infrastructure and supply of renewable energy so that people can charge their cars in a sustainable way. Now we will do our part, we will do what we can, but we also need help. Now let's get to the car behind me. This is really an amazing car. It's been a fantastic journey for me since the beginning of the development. It's a car of firsts and it's a car of the future. It's the first Volvo to run an infotainment system that will have an experience as good as that of your mobile phone. It's the first Volvo to continuously become better over time because its software is updated always over the air. And most importantly, the XC40 Recharge is the first fully electric car from Volvo. And let's talk a bit about it. It's electric without compromise. It's based on our compact modular architecture that was built ground up for electrification. Which means that the batteries, as you can see outside and on the screen here, have been placed in the center of the floor without any impact on the interior space. And that's despite the battery's considerable size for this relatively small car. In fact, the XC40 Recharge adds storage space compared to the internal combustion variant by adding space and storage where the combustion engine normally is in the front. 
Now these large batteries, they mean you can go over 400 kilometers in one go. And you'll be able to charge back up to 80% of that in 40 minutes with a fast charger. OK, for those who are interested, let's talk a bit about the technical specification. What are we looking at here? Starting with the battery. We are looking at a battery with 78 kilowatt hour of energy capacity. 408 horsepowers in two electrical machines, then adding up to 300 kilowatt. So together, they give you the impressive 660 newton meters of torque and 0 to 100 in an SUV in 4.9 seconds. But that's not all. And this is perhaps the most interesting part. To make the car feel more personal, we are fundamentally rethinking infotainment. Now, powered with Android, the new infotainment system offers unprecedented personalization. And it's more intuitive than any system like it before it. Now, we're the first company to team up with Google to integrate an infotainment system powered by the Android operating system and the, with the Google technologies built in from start. We've been in joint development with Google for years now, and it's really a pleasure, and we're super excited to stand here today and launch this technology in this new car. Now, of course, the cars are fully connected. They come, as I said, with Google Assistant, Google Maps, and we evolve with a new array of automotive apps developed by the global developer community for Android. Now, the real-time maps will keep the drivers informed about upcoming traffic situations to avoid congestion, to save energy, and of course, as well, to suggest the nearest charging station when you're running low. And also, let's admit, that voice control in cars have historically had its issues. Now, this completely changed with the Google Assistant. This will be a voice control that works every time you use it and that will understand what you're trying to do. Now, what does it allow you to do? Well, as a user in this car, you can, of course, use the Assistant to manage all the in-car functionality. You can set the climate in the air conditioning system, you can choose destination in the navigation system. You can also play music, of course, in one of the apps such as Spotify. You can search the web. Or you can stay connected to friends using text messaging. And it improves over time. Exactly as your Google Assistant in home or in your phone, which gets better basically every day, so does the Assistant in the car. And in fact, the whole car gets better over time. The XC40 Recharge is our first Volvo to receive updates over the air, both for the operating system itself, but also for all software inside the vehicle. It can be updated over the air. Now, this will, of course, allow the car to be up to date, but it also allows us to add and offer new features and new functions to the customer in their home. So the XC40 will stay as fresh as your phone or tablet. No longer a car's best day is the day it leaves the factory. So it allows you to stay in the car longer, enjoying it being fresher every day, which is also, of course, good for the environment. Now, finally, and this should go without saying in a Volvo car, the XC40 recharge is safe. Now, that is what Volvo customers expect. That's what you should expect. And that's what we deliver. Now, regardless of what drives a Volvo forward, be it a combustion engine, electric machines, a Volvo should always be safe. Now, we have made cars with combustion engines for over 90 years. This is our first fully electric vehicle. And to make an electric vehicle safe has its unique challenges. The front structure the side structure, the rear structure, all of it has been adapted 
as we remove the engine from the front and we place the heavy batteries in the center of the floor. Now this car also has a completely new pilot assist and active safety platform and it's the first Volvo to run on software developed by Zenuity, ready for the future and for more advanced applications. So in short, the XC40 Recharge will be one of the safest cars we have ever built, as you could and should expect. The XC40 Recharge is the first for Volvo. It's a big milestone for us, and it's an insight for what the future will look like. The future is electric, and we are super committed to go all in on it. Now here is Björn, my colleague and friend, coming up to tell you all about the new Recharge line. Thank you so much. Thank you, Henrik. Today we introduce, together with the XC40 Recharge, also our brand new Recharge line. With Recharge, we evolve how we package our offer and how we sell our cars. Soon, as you visit our .com, come to our stores or call us to buy a car, we will ask you one existential question, to cord or not to cord? A Volvo with a cord, a charging cable, that's our recharge line. It's include the XC40 recharge. It also includes all our plug-in hybrids that you currently know as our cars with twin engine powertrains. We want to bring electric cars front of mind and shift sales to full electric cars and part-time electric cars. It's a strong statement of our intent around climate change and our commitment to electrification. Our customers expect us to do the same stellar job when it comes to planetary safety as they always expect us to do when it comes to car safety. And plug-ins play an important role to accelerate the world into a fully electric future. Today, 60% of our carbon footprint comes from the tailpipe emission of a car. So here it's critical that we take action. Our industry is currently finally in a transition phase from internal combustion engines towards a fully electric future. But that transition is slow. What hinders the pace are a number of things. It's the affordability of vehicles, it's access to charging infrastructure, and it's also the time it takes to change consumer behaviors and habits. Plugins have an important role to overcome those hinders. In many places, you have a chicken and egg problems where there are very few electric cars, and therefore, there is limited charging infrastructures. And with limited charging infrastructure, consumers are hesitating to buy full electric cars. Plug-in hybrids help solve part of that conundrum. Plug-in hybrids also help customers get used to electric cars. What is my driving patterns? Where can I charge? How can I make charging part of my daily routine? Typical car users, they use the cars a lot of times for very short trips. But every now and then, they need the car for a longer trip. If that's your driving pattern, and if you have the opportunity to charge overnight at home or at work, plug-in hybrid technology is a very good solution. How are the Volvo customers using plug-in technology? If we look across our total fleet of hybrids, it clearly shows that the customer used them as intended, as a part-time electric car. The cars are driven from charged electricity for more than 40% of the time. And this is true and consistent across continents and countries. And this kind of follows a normal distribution, meaning that thousands of our customers, they use charged electricity for more than 60% of the distance. And this is promising. The cars are being used as intended, as part-time electric cars. And again, the tailpipe emission is the biggest driver of our carbon footprint. So we must make sure it comes down now. So we want to do what we can to adopt, to make sure we increase the adoption of fully electric and part-time electric cars. So we have another exciting piece of news today. Today, we announced that every Volvo Recharge 
plug-in hybrid cars comes with one year of free electricity. The more you make use of your car motor, the more you save. The offer is valid in all our Volvo and Coal markets, and it's valid for all plug-in cars starting today. It's an incentive for the driver. So even if you order a company car, this incentive goes to you as a person. It's only you who can change and drive the behavior. Through our Volvo and Coal app, you can monitor the charge level and the share of electric driving that you're performing. Just like a step counter helps some people to live a healthier lifestyle, we hope this will help some customers to drive and use the technology in a more sustainable way. After one year, you will get a sustainability bonus, a cash refund through the Volvo and Coal app. It's a big investment for us. Our intention is to drive adoption of part-time electric cars and encourage the sustainable use of them. Again, this offer is valid for all orders placed from today. So, in our plan to radically reduce CO2 emissions per car, plugins play a key role in making that happen. Boasting plug-in hybrid sales now help pave the way for a fully electric future. So, in addition to free electricity, we put some real focus on this and take some real actions. First of all, we make sure plugins are available on every model in our lineup. We extend the available number of twin engine plug in hybrid powertrains to more variants at different price levels. We make them more affordable. We've also invested in tripling the manufacturing capacity and are now quickly ramping up our production. Globally, we aim to sell 20% of our cars as plug-in hybrids during next year, 2020. We're also significantly reducing lead time from order to delivery of the plug-in hybrids. Recharge cars with popular spec levels and color combination will be available for immediate deliveries in key markets. So to sum up, the new XC40 recharge and our recharge line are fundamental parts of our sustainability strategy and our new climate plan. We want to be a brand for people who care about other people. And as such, our customers expect us to do the same stellar job for planetary safety as we've always done for car safety. The world needs to shift to full electric future quickly. And full-time electric cars and part-time electric cars play an important role to make sure we come there. That's why we recharge ourselves. But electrification is not enough. So to tell you more about the holistic climate plan, welcome back, Henrik. Thank you, Björn. And as you said, electrification alone is not enough. In fact, it poses new challenges. And it's time we discuss these transparently. Today, the supply chain makes up for one-third of the total CO2 footprint throughout the life cycle of a new car. Now, reducing the tailpipe emissions, that part increase up to two-thirds of the total life cycle of the vehicle and is primarily in the future driven by battery cell manufacturing. Now, this is an industry challenge and we need to collaborate. We need to collaborate with car makers, battery makers, legislation making, and also energy providers to solve it. And we cannot wait. Now is the time for us to act. And therefore, we are setting these super ambitious targets to cut CO2 emissions by 40% per car by 2025. And that is on our way to the long-term target of being fully carbon neutral by 2040. So, we have also said consumers expect to move freely and to be sustainable at the same time. Offering anything else wouldn't make any sense. So let's look at where the emissions, where the emissions are happening and what actions we plan to take against it. Processing of ingoing materials is by far the largest energy consumption in the supply chain steel, aluminium, plastics, and the batteries. 
Now that is why we're moving to energy from renewable sources. Working on our total energy efficiency, waste reduction and specification of materials. And more standardizing so that we can enable and support recycling. Now absolutely key to make is to make sustainability a core element of every sourcing decision and with those suppliers that we work and collaborate with to intensively work together towards more sustainable solution in the supply chain. Because we cannot do this alone. And just to share with you a bit of a story how far we have come in just a few years. So let me take you back when we started to source this new electrification program. Martina, our head of procurement, together with myself, were meeting with all the major battery suppliers. We were sitting down together, we were reviewing requirement after requirement, line by line, for the new batteries. And we were constantly, adamantly pushing on sustainability, what about sustainability, how about sustainability. Already in our second meeting, we could see this changed. We met the suppliers again, and on top of their agenda, that time, we could see sustainability. Now, today, a few years later only, we stand together strongly committed to work towards renewable energy for all battery cell production together with our global partners. And of course, to comply with a responsible and ethical supply chain. Coming to our own operations, building our cars, transporting them. Now we have taken action to be climate neutral in our own manufacturing facilities by 2025. In fact, our Skövde engine manufacturing already reached that milestone in 2018. And the rest are on their way. Boosting energy from solar power, wind power and other renewable energy sources. And as Björn talked about, of course we also need to promote electric driving with electricity from renewable energy. Coming back to our batteries, a key part for our batteries is of course that they also need to be either renewable or recyclable. And as a good example already today, one of our suppliers are using recycled cobalt from consumer batteries. So in short, to recap, we are looking at a 40% reduction of CO2 per car by 2025. And we are doing that in three main focus areas. Starting with a 50% reduction in tailpipe emission by 2025. Enabled by the fact that half of all the cars we sell the same year should be fully electric. On top of that, we target to reduce the CO2 per car by 25% throughout the entire supply chain. And with the same 25% throughout our own complete operation. That includes research and development, it includes manufacturing, it includes logistics. As you have sensed, we don't wait. We have the power to influence and we need to act now. In close collaboration with all our partners and the industry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Henrik and Björn. Um, let me just summarize then. I mean, we will make sustainability part of our company purpose. We have really good experience how we have worked with safety. It has worked. We are quite confident this will work also for sustainability. We are taking concrete uh, measures. We have uh, the full-time uh, electric cars, the BEVs, first one presented. One will follow every year. And then we have a very powerful concept, what you call, Björn, the part-time electric cars, mm -hmm. where we will also incentivize the user to really use it in the right way so that two recharged plug-in cars will do the same to the environment as one 
one full electric cars and we will bring out and sell already next year 20% of recharged. And we are really serious about electrification. We change our basic structure of our company by separating the combustion R&D, combustion uh, production into a separate unit to be combined as an intention with GLIS. Uh, powertrain units so that we can, without compromises, concentrate on electrification. All of these actions will lead up then to our ambition, midterm 2025, 40% reduction in our carbon footprint, as uh, you just heard. So it's a very brave plan and uh, it will also make Volvo a more attractive employer, attracting the right people and also with a good answer to the future challenges within our area. So with that, you are welcome to join us here on stage and uh, talk to our experts. Have a look at the new car. Thank you for coming.